It's the nation's favourite antiques experts. What a job. With £200 each. You with me? A classic car. Buckle up. And a gold to scar Britain for antiques. Oh, sorry. Ha <laughs> ha. The aim? To make the biggest profit at auction. But it's no mean feat. <laughs> There'll be worthy winners. Yes. And valiant losers. So, will it be the high road to glory <laughs> or the slow road to disaster? Have a good trip. <laughs> this is the Antiques Road Trip. Yeah. It's just over the midway point for our daring duo. Experts Catherine Southern. I'm your chauffeur. And a specialist in scientific instruments, by the way. And Raj Bisram, who runs a busy cell room in Kent. I can do the wipers. You're just the co-pilot. Wipers on dead. Do you like being told what to do? Ha! They're in deepest Derbyshire, home to the Bakewell tart and inspiration for Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. The two are not connected, I think. There's a stone, isn't there, that comes from Derbyshire? A very famous stone? Oh, um, Blue John. That's it, Blue John. Blue John. That's what I'm going to buy. Yeah. Oh, you see, I've given you another, <laughs> no. another heads up. It's the penultimate road trip for our MG beers, so is it time to splash the cash or play it safe? Let's see. All I ask is that you're going to spend a bit of money today. I it? am, I am, definitely. I'm going to have a lovely lunch. But it's... <laughs> <laughs> he is naughty <laughs> and likes to hold on to his pennies. I would like you, by the end of today, to say to me, Catherine, I've spent £200 on one item. Really? Oh, well, that would make my day. Yeah, I bet it would. <laughs> I bet it would. From his original £200, Raj has increased his pot to a whopping £311.80. While Catherine, who began with the same sum, now has £375.08. As I'm shortly about to go into the leave, I think I might buy oh. you dinner. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> don't count your chickens, Raj. We're totting up the miles on this road trip, which started off in Cambridge and carried on around East Anglia before heading both north and west towards the Peak District. The trip will continue through the West Midlands to finish up over 600 miles later in Bristol. Today, we'll begin in the Amber Valley in the town of Sandyacre and end at auction in Middle Littleton in Worcestershire. And Catherine, good egg that she is, is dropping Raj off at his first shopping stop, Sandy Acre Antiques. Perfecto. Perfect. Wish me luck. Good My luck. first item, £65 profit. Happy shopping. Be thrifty. <laughs> you don't need to tell him twice. <laughs> With just £60 or so separating our experts, it's game on. Raj, what's the plan? I'm not going to take too many risks this time. I'm just going to buy things that maybe can make me, you know, £10, £20. That's what I'm kind of looking for. But you never know. You might find that one thing that can make you a lot of money. These are really nice early tennis rackets. This one's an actual a Dunlop one, and it's got its brace with it, which you don't often see. The ones that you really want to collect are the ones that have got fishtail handles. The, the handle looks like a fishtail. They can be worth somewhere between 50 to 100 pounds. So it's out for the tennis rackets. But any pointers where Raj might serve up an ace? Oh, wow, <laughs> that's helpful. They're quite reasonably priced. They're commemorative plates. But what's unusual about them is that they look as if they're porcelain or fine china, but actually they're made of tin. At least you won't break them, look out. To be honest, they look better from a distance. Don't we all? And they do close up. They're made by uh, Portland Ware. This is Queen Elizabeth II and obviously Prince Philip there. They're from the 1950s. They're in good condition and hopefully they should make at auction. 10 to 15 pounds. So cheap, Raj. Are you sure that's not treason? We'll leave Raj to ponder his tin plates and catch up with Catherine, who's taken our route eight miles north to Hina and Hina Antique Center in the Amber Valley. Hello. Hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> Who might you Lovely be? Lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you. You I'm are? I'm Jane. Hello, Jane. I'm Catherine. And I'm Tim. <laughs> 
Catherine has four floors of antiques to explore here and around 200 dealers stock to wade through. Time to get a shifty on, eh? Look at all that lot. Look what I found. Now, this is something that really floats my boat. So this china was made for first-class passengers, the diners of the Olympic and the Titanic. This one is not from the Titanic. It's probably something that was made for diners of the Olympic. A little butter pat, and I think that's so lovely. This turquoise and brown pattern is not particularly attractive in my mind, but it's something that if you see it, pounce on it because it's something that's always worth buying. However, this little butter pat, it's 225 pounds, so today it's not for me, but I love it. Well, that's one gone down the river then. But fear not, Jane may have something Catherine could fancy. What about this, Catherine? Oh, that's it's pretty. It's a Georgian pimbroach pearl. Seed pearls are natural pearls measuring less than two millimetres in diameter, perfect for jewellery and chopping in half. I think it's lovely, delightful. Is it yours? Yes. What sort of price are you asking for? 70. Was that a gulp, Catherine? I can probably negotiate a bit on it. Can you? I like it a lot, but not what anywhere about near that. 50. Should we put that to one side yes. as a sort of possibility? I do like it. Let me just pop that in there. Thank you very much. No, that's I'll put it on the counter Lovely. for you. Hmm. Digestion. Still plenty to rootle through, though. Oh, look out. What's this? What has caught my eye? this. First of all, you might think a very boring pair of binoculars, and yes, they are. They're French, they're towards the end of the 19th century, and the actual barrels themselves are not decorated. They're a sort of ivory, creamy colour, and quite frankly, boring. But what is interesting is this delightful handle. But I've never seen one like that that's painted with a cherub. Really unusual. It might actually not be associated with this pair of binoculars. It's a really nice handle. Don't like the binoculars, love the handle. £58? Time to see Jane. I found a pair of opera glasses with the handle. I'll be honest with you, Jane, I really don't like the opera glasses no. at all. But I love the handle. Yes, it's lovely. OK, this is marked up at 58, but I wondered if we could do a deal on the two. I'll give you an offer. Tell me what you think. How does £40 on the two sound? Sounds cheeky to me. On the two? Is that a bit too cheeky? 45 and you've got a deal. Really? Yeah, Jane. That's fantastic. Well, that was unexpected. So, that's £20 for the plain opera glasses with the decorative handle and £25 for the seed pearl brooch. That is an excellent first shop. Thank you. Lovely to see you. Thanks Thank very you. much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Let's see if Raj has found anything other than tin plates back in San Diego. Well, we're going to the countryside. This is quite a nice-looking walking stick. Ticket price, £14. I'd be quite happy to walk around with this, and it's nice that it's got the horn handles on it. It's even got a, a copper collar there as well. And, to be honest, I'm going back to my old ways. I'm going to offer a fiver. Oh, Raj. Catherine said to be thrifty, not mean. Is dealer Christina feeling generous? Stand by. Those two commemorative plates, mm -hmm. they're not normally my kind of thing, but what's so nice about them is because I, I know they're tin. Yes. Yeah, yeah and, and, and they're really well done to make look like... Very unusual. Yeah, they look like yeah. porcelain plates. Mm, well if I could buy those for a fiver... OK. What do you think? Yeah. You're happy with that? Yes, happy with that. OK. I think that the auction is in the country. Lots of people go walking, and I've seen a walking stick, which is quite nice. Uh-oh. Gird your loins, girl. Could you do the two items for £10? OK. Um, for you, yes. You sure? Yes. You're happy with that? Yes. In that case, I am going to shake your hand. OK. Thank you very much. You I found welcome. something in the end. Good. Raj has bagged himself two tin plates and a walking stick for a tenner. <laughs> That's cheap. Who knows what Catherine will have to say about that? Taking a break from shopping, Catherine's made her way to the southeastern edge of the Peak District and the National Tramway Museum in the village of Kreich. 
She's come to learn about the inspirational women who kept Britain moving during World War I and how their contribution to the war effort led to the first ever strike for equal pay for women. Oh, I think that's my tram. <laughs> Hello. I'm Hello. Catherine. I'm Laura. I'm the curator here at the National Tramway Museum. Shall we go for a ride? Love to. Trams like the Chesterfield would have been in use when the Great War brought great change, especially for some women. The tramways were very supportive of the war effort. They released men to go fight. They encouraged people to actually join up and enlist. They were actually struggling to run the trams. Therefore, you have this massive shift. For the first time, women are actually on board the trams, crewing them. Initially, the tramway managers were resistant to the idea of women working on trams, citing the physical work and even unruly passengers as too much for their female sensibilities. However, the need for trams to keep moving outweighed any objections. You know, you get loads of cases where actually you hear the women sort of saying they really enjoyed the work. I bet they did, though, because such a change from their normal work. Women proved that they were every bit as capable as the men they replaced. One job was to switch the connector pole at the end of the line to allow the tram to do a return trip and travel in the opposite direction. What do I do? So if you want to grab hold of the end of the rope, first of all, and take it out of the loop. Right. Oh, gosh, that's easier said than done. Just so if you want to put it straight down off the line, and then if you want to start walking around in a quite it's a large heavy. circle. <laughs> How long would this normally take? Uh, it varies from person to person. I've got no circulation in my hands. There we go. Right. There we go. Easy peasy. Working on the trams might be physically hard work, but in the early 1900s, modesty was paramount. Right, OK, so this is something that they would wear? It is. It's a very typical uh, replica of what a uniform would have been during the First World War. So obviously for the men and the general managers, they had to have all these considerations about what would be appropriate at the time. Right, OK. Which is why you have the length of the skirt down to the ankle. Part of the uniform also coined their nickname, the Clippy Girls. So that's where the name comes from, from the punch. And we just happen to have one up here as well for you. So it's an original uh, one which would have been used on the it's tramway. Heavy, isn't it? So this is from 1914? Yes, yeah, so it's definitely one of the type which would have been used during the war period. So you take the ticket and you just pop it in the slot, like that. And so, yep, and then just push down on the bottom part and it should ring. Fantastic. Okay. So I'm officially a clippy girl now. You are indeed, yes. At the time, transport was the second biggest employer of women next to the civil service. And with the suffragette movement in the headlines, talk of women's equality was rapidly gaining ground. So this is our Rothsay Tramways Company ledger. So it records what they were actually paid during the war period. So this Goodness. is the wage allocation sheet. This is 1915. A conductor just here. Now he's getting paid 18 shillings and six for that week's work. And then you've got the conductresses and she's actually being paid 13 shillings and six. Gosh. Yeah, so quite a bit less. For doing exactly the same days? Yes. And they were well aware of this, the women? Yes, very much so, um, which is where you get the strike action coming from. In August 1918, a group of women tram workers went on strike over demands for equal pay. The strike spread across the country and is considered to be the first ever unionised industrial action by women in favour of equal pay. And do you think it really shaped the way that women were paid in the future? I think so, yes. You do have examples where the women did actually have success and they were being paid equally, but on the other hand, you did also have a few tramways who didn't. So it's a bit of a mixed bag, but it's certainly in the longer term had a benefit for women and progressing forwards. After the war, the Clippy Girls had to make way for the return of the surviving men. However, thanks to their contribution to the tramways, the advancement of equal female rights had begun. Meanwhile, Raj is headed to Belpa in the Amber Valley. So far, he's barely made a dent in his £311 budget, spending just £10. Maybe something pricey will catch his eye in Derwentshire Antiques. Hello there. Hello, how are you? I'm Raj. Hello, Raj, I'm Colin. Well, there's certainly plenty here. That is a really quite nice, attractive stool. Look at that. Doesn't look very comfy. 
Besides, there's no time for loafing. You've got a bag of cash to spend. Perhaps dealer Andy can encourage you to part with it. What about these pieces? In somebody's conservatory with a little bit of planty, ferny things in? Hmm? Isn't this something you pee in? It is. Hmm. Maybe something else? A stone trough that could be very cheap. It's just a thought. It is. You, do you know something? It mm. might be a thought. Mm. If it was priced right... We can talk turkey. Raj is fluent in that. <laughs> what could that be? That... Yeah. ..could be £18. Today is my fiver day. All right. Oh, now, stop when, that. When people say they've no. got to take their five a day, no. what I mean is I mean I've got to spend the five a day. Now, now, but I'm getting close. Now, what about... What about if I offered you ten pounds for it? Double my five a day. You sure? Come on. We have a deal. Mm. Just. And you still have to carry it. With that stone trough in the bag, can Raj find something to help lighten the load? I really like this ammonite. OK. That'll be a no, then. I can only tell you that it came from a very serious collector and he had quite a lot of fossils. In fact, this cabinet was quite full at one time. Got a rough age to it, does he...? Does he... Very old. Very old. <laughs> is it possible that you maybe could phone him? I just want an idea of how old it OK. Is. Lovely, thanks. OK. And Cheers. while you're there, can you just ask him what the best price would be as well? I could ask him that, yeah. OK. Yeah. Cheers. OK, thanks. Fossils are a limited market, but that, to me, is not just a fossil. It's a talking point. It's a centrepiece. I think as far as fossil collectors are concerned, this has got to be a standout piece. Look out. Colin's back from the basement. He okay. bought it off a fossil hunter. Right, OK. At an auction. But he can't really tell you much more than that okay, about no, it. OK, no, that's fair enough, that's fair enough. It's going to come down to the price, Colin. OK. Well, we got it on there for sale at £135. Right. What about, then, if I offered £70? I will offer You'd seventy. Probably have to do a bit better than seventy, wouldn't you? Eighty. I'll go to eighty. Go to ninety, and if he shouts at me, I shall bellow to you from okay. a distance. Well, let's split the difference and go eighty-five. Put your hand there. Okay. Fantastic. Very better, good. I better come down and sort out the money. Okay. Okay. Right. Let's go. Follow me. Well, that's a great price if it's the real thing. The stone trough and the ammonite concludes today's shopping. And Raj has finally spent some cash. After a successful day of antique hunting, our experts are back in the MGB and Catherine returns to her chauffeursing duties. If I had one complaint... Oh, here we a, go. ..is that when we stop, you don't really get round to open the door quick enough for me. <laughs> you can't get out quick enough. <laughs> Listen, you're, you're lucky I'm driving you around everywhere. You both deserve a well-earned rest. Nighty-night. It's a soggy start for day two for our duo, but nothing can dampen their spirits when it comes to scouring the countryside for antiques. Today I want to find something that I love, something that I'm really, really happy about. Have you still got lots of money to spend? I've got a fair watch. Why, Have do you, you? Need, need some? No, I've got loads. He certainly has. Yesterday, Raj spent just a few pounds on the commemorative plates, the horn-handled walking stick, the stone trough, and he splashed out on the ammonite fossil too. He does still have two hundred and six pounds and eight pence left to play with. Isn't this something you pee in? While Catherine bought just two lots, and the Georgian seed pearl brooch and the nineteenth-century opera glasses. Don't like the binoculars. Love the handle. Leaving her with three hundred and thirty pounds and that all-important eight pence. So we are right in the middle of the Peak District. Isn't it beautiful? I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I mean, I've never been here before. Do you know one of the things I'm looking forward to today? I really would love to have a Bakewell tart. Oh, you've got to, haven't you? Yes. I mean, here oh, we are. Here Bakewell, we... there's, there's the sign. There's a sign to Bakewell. Oh. Let's go there. No time for that. Antiques await, please. We'll leave Raj to his Bakewell tarts. Catherine has some shopping to do. She's made her way to Chesterfield. Home to St Mary and All Saints and its world-famous Crooked Spa, which draws many to this Derbyshire town. 
But for Catherine, it's the stock of Chesterfield Antique Centre. There are 30 dealers over the three floors. It's cavernous. This is something more for me. This is up my street. This is a really nice early 20th century monocular microscope. It's in really nice condition. A microscope is right up Catherine Street. This one is by A. Franks, a late 19th century optician who had a keen interest in scientific instruments. This is really nice because it's got all its little bits and pieces with it, including this little specimen box here. So what you do is you put your dead beetle or your spider or anything else you want to find in this little box here and you slide it onto the stage here. And what would be amazing is if I open this drawer down the bottom and it's full of slides. It's empty. <laughs> that's a disappointment. What I was hoping to find is a whole rack of specimen slides there because that's the real bee's knees. Crikey, you would need a microscope to see bee's knees. It's a lovely little microscope though and the fact you've got some accessories with it and it's in lovely condition, that, that's a good thing. £125, little punchy. If it was nearer 60 to 70 pounds, I would be scooping this up all day long. That's one possible. But there's still plenty more to see. Ooh, I like this. MM Marilyn Monroe. This could have been hers, although I think it's probably more of a gentleman's case. This is lovely, what a good size. It's in lovely condition. Very nice, nice array of bottles there. Don't think they're silver top, but how lovely to have it complete. And then you've got another section there for your briefs, perhaps, I don't know. But really nicely lined, all in lovely condition. I think this is a possibility. I think not. That's a shame. Moving on then. I did notice this earlier when I was browsing around. Anything sort of connected with advertising? I mean, this is, this is connected with cigar and cigarettes, so not, yeah. not great. The fact that we've got a display case with an advertising name underneath, I think that could be interesting how much is on this 20 pounds well it's got all its original lining the glass is all fine on top the name is nice and clear not too much scratching there i think that should be bought for 20 pounds this is mine that was a fine display of decision making now how about that earlier find i've got to come back to this microscope because i do like it it's one of the better things here right they're my items where's bob Bob! How could Bob resist? I was rather interested in this little display cabinet because we've got the brand underneath, which is always quite nice from an advertising point of view. It's got £20 on it. Can you negotiate on that? 15 Yeah, I'll happily take that at 15 Yeah? OK. I'll shake on Thank that one. Thank you. That was easy. So I've gone from something vintage to something that's a real antique right. and I, I do like this. The problem is with this, the handle, I'm looking at this now, is all taped up so it's yeah. obviously in bad condition and once upon a time that would have been lined with a really nice set of Just specimen slides. slides. Yeah. Um, do you think you could do 70? Yeah, okay then we'll do 70. You happy with that Bob? Yeah. Put it there, okay. Bob. Okay. Right, thank you. Right. Well done, Catherine. Some handsome purchases there. Raj, meanwhile, has made his way to Pike Hall Farm near Matlock to hear the intriguing history of English cheese Stilton and to find out why it's not made in Stilton some 80 miles away. He's got a date with the big cheese at the Hartington Creamery. Hello there. Hi Raj, Alan Salt, nice to meet you. Lovely to meet you too. But before any cheese secrets are revealed, there's some hygiene to attend to. So hairnet? Hairnet? Yeah. You've got to be joking. I like that. It's so flattering, isn't it? Let's try and make it look a bit better. This could be a new look for you. Shoes off and then you sit on it, you swing over. It's like a Jim Carner. There you are, you're in. Are you ready? You look all ship-shape, ready yep. to go. 
Let's go um, and have a look at the cheese. I'm with you. Stilton begins life as a curd, careful how you say that, which is poured into cylinders to form its familiar shape. It's then turned daily for around a week before the binding process is started, which gives the cheese its distinctive crust. This same method dates back hundreds of years. So what we're doing, we're sealing the, the cheese up and that will dry out and form the Stilton crust. All done by hand? Yes. So how long does it actually take? Myrtle and, and Dawn can do one every five minutes. That's Are you going to have a go at this? Go on, Raj. You know you want to. Brilliant. And there you have it. This is the fun bit, is you pick it up like that and then drop it back down again. Easy stuff for you, Raj. Put your hand like that. Oh, like that. Yeah. That's it. Now flick it over quick. That's it. Honestly, you're doing really well for a first attempt. The most popular theory of the origins of Stilton begins in the 1800s when the landlord of the Bell Inn on the Great North Road in the village of Stilton decided to sell the unusual cheese. As the inn was on the route connecting the north and the south, travellers from all over Britain would buy the cheese en route to take home. And at twice the price, this unusual blue-veined delicacy was considered a rarefied luxury and became known as the cheese from Stilton. I mean, Stilton is known the world over. Hasn't it got some sort of royal approval? They got George V in the 1920s, royal, royal appointment, and that was because someone who, who had a share in the factory, his brother lived beside Sandringham Estate, okay. and invited George over for a snack, and they served up some Stilton. He liked it, so they actually sent him a cheese, and he passed it back that they could have the royal warrant. It still holds the royal warrant? No, no, no. no. It only lasts while the, 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 the king is alive. Okay. So, no, it's, that's a bit of history. An intriguing part of the cheese's history is that Stilton isn't made in Stilton and never has been. Stilton's been made in Derbyshire, Leicester and Nottinghamshire for at least a couple of hundred years, 300 years. Um, and be honest, during that time, as far as I know, no one's ever tried to make Stilton in Stilton before. So the three counties that we've talked about, are they the only places in the world that you can actually make Stilton? It's protected by some old trademarks from the 1920s. And as Raj has got stuck in to making the cheese, it only seems fair he gets to sample some. I think I should try a little bit. I of think you should try a little I bit. I think I should try a little bit, yeah. Just to make sure it's up to the yeah. Oh. God, that is delicious. Well, I've had an amazing time here. It's been Thank absolutely fantastic. I'm hoping I can take a little bit with me. Uh, well, we'll see what we can do <laughs> yeah. about that. Meanwhile, Catherine's headed to Cromford. Her last opportunity to shop for some goodies is at Heritage Antique Centre. She still has over £206 to play with. Hang on, what's she up to? I just picked something off a shelf which is a little pen knife, and I've dropped it, and it's gone under the cabinet. We got it. OK, this is what I was interested in. It's by Joseph Feist Solingen. Joseph Feist of Solingen, the German city of Blades. The reason I like it is a little pen knife, and it's a sleeping lion, and it is beautiful quality. Look at that, look at the little curls on the lion, the mane. It's really stunning. It's just something about this, it, it, it speaks to me. I'm going to see what Sally thinks. It didn't take me long. <laughs> I found something which I quite like, this little pen knife. I do like it, but of course it's not silver. I think it's just a, a base metal. Yeah. But I think the decoration is delightful. Can I make an offer on it? Yep. Why not? Would it be possible to get this for twenty pounds? I'll do twenty-five. Twenty-two? Twenty-five. The way that the way you looked at me, it had to be <laughs> twenty-five. I'm scared. Right, right. That's Catherine's buying done for this trip, and Raj has arrived just before closing time. But he's headed for a neighbouring shop, the Cromford Mill. He'd better get a move on. Hello there. Hello, Raj. Hello, David, is it? Yes, pleased to meet you, Raj. You too. This is Linda, my wife. Hello. Hello pleased to meet you. 
Roll your sleeves up, Raj. You've got antiques to find. This is Clarish Cliff. It's quite a... Well, not, it's not a plain design. It has no design. But Clarice Cliff, as we all know, you know, she was extremely well known. One of the most famous designers this country's ever had. This is not one of those collectible patterns. I mean, everybody collects the bizarre, the real colourful jugs. I mean, they make hundreds of pounds, thousands now. Seems quite reasonable at 55. If I could get that sort of around 25 to 30 pounds, there's got to be a profit in it. Time to talk money. David? I do like the Clarice Cliff. I think it's a bit plain. I'll be honest, I think it's a little bit plain because you know the Clarice Cliff that everybody wants is the bizarre, yeah, of course you it know, is. And the yeah. patterns, yeah. the rare patterns, the nice colourful things. There's not a colour on that. No, but it's very stylish. Is that the word you use for plain? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just give me a clue as to what kind of money that could be. Oh, that could be around. For you, 35. How about that? How does that sound? That's cheap. What about, uh, Twenty-five pounds. Twenty-five pounds? Yeah. What do you think, Linda? Shall we go for that? It's a deal, right? We have a deal. Thank you very much. Twenty-five pounds. You'll make a fortune <laughs> on that. <laughs> well, that deal was all very jovial, and it brings shopping for this road trip to a close. Yeah. Cheers, guys. Thanks again. Take care. Bye. Time for our experts to regroup. What did you ask for? Oh, that looks like a baked ball tart. There we go. Don't say I'd never get oh, you anything. Oh, that's very, oh. very kind of you. Thank you so much for it's that. It's been on a journey. Uh... I got you something as well. <gasps> I got you a nice wow! piece of stuff. That's fantastic. <laughs> Look at that. I bet you'd rather have this than that. <laughs> Come on, Let's jump go. in. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> we go. I'm guessing you're quite competitive. So if you lose, which I don't think you will, but if you do lose, oh. are you a sore loser or are you just no. dust it all off? I will cry. Cry? <laughs> and, and then and then probably not talk to you for a couple of years. Win or lose, I have had absolutely great fun. It has been good fun. Yep, it's been a busy old day. And time now for some shut eye. After kicking off their trip in the Amber Valley, our experts have arrived safely at Littleton Auctions in the parish of Middle Littleton in Worcestershire. Let's hope we don't get any sauce from them. <laughs> oh, time for a musical interlude. <laughs> dear, oh dear. What a welcome. Raj bought five items for £130. Catherine purchased five items, shelling out £155. Deals were struck and bargains sought. But what do our experts make of each other's purchases? The word why springs to mind. Raj, why did you buy these plates? Big spend again, I see, £5. Well, you're really splashing the money out, I have to say. Good point on these. The condition is fantastic. And, and... They make great frisbees. Now, this is a nice little thing. Well done, Catherine. It's a little pen knife. It's, it's not silver, it's a white metal one. It's in really good condition. I just hope it doesn't cut into my profits. In charge of proceedings today is auctioneer Martin Homer. And there's news on Raj's ammonite. If it is an ammonite, people have come to look at it and don't think it is. But if it is right, it could be worth a lot of money. Opera glass is one of my favourite pieces with the very nice painted handle and signed by the artist, so I think they'll be quite popular. With bidders in the room and online, it's time to take a seat. Lovely atmosphere, lots of people. Happy? Yeah. First up is Catherine's seed pearl brooch. 20? 29 bid, thank you. We're in the room at 20. Oh dear, I bid 25. At 20, 22 on the internet. It's the sort of thing yeah, that yeah. the internet will probably 25 buy. Pounds. 25 pounds. Room at 25. At 20 for 27 on the internet. 27. Profit. <laughs> okay. profit. The next week Every, everything that makes a profit has got to be good. We're in the room at 30 pounds and two. At 32 on the internet. Are we done then? At 30, 35 is back in. It's at 35 pounds. 37 if you want that. 37. At 37 pounds. Fair warning, 37. 
nice start, eh? What a lovely start. Not what you'd pinned your hopes on, Catherine, but you're still in the game. That's a good start. Well done. Well done. I really like you now. Well, it's early days. <laughs> Next up, the first of Raj's big spends, his commemorative plates, made of tin. Good frisbees. Good, good frisbees. <laughs> 15 for them. 10 for them, then. 10 pounds. Help. Dear, oh dear. Come on, guys, 10 pounds. I'm going to go then five. Five I'm bid. Yay. Seven with you. Seven pounds. The bid's in the room at seven. They were Is ten. Ten pounds. And I'm selling at ten pounds. You've He's made stopping. some money. Sold at ten. Oh, well. Be happy. I am, Yay. I am, I am. More like relieved. Raj's plates double their money. You have made a profit. Yeah, I've made a small yes. profit. Next is Catherine's Henry Winterman's display case. I just think this is going to go up in smoke. At I'm sorry. At £20, I'm going to give it two now. 22 in the room. Oh, it's room gone bananas. At 22 in the room. At 22 it's not in gone the bananas. Room. It's, it's 22 pounds. Oh, she's bidding. At 25, new bidder. At 25. 27, sir. 27. 30. Ooh. At 30 pounds. You the crushed your teeth there. Are we all in, ladies and gentlemen, at 30 pounds. All I can say is that it must come with a free box of cigars. That's not too bad at all. It wasn't a great thing. I'm happy at that. Will Raj's walking stick appeal to the countryside buyer? Here we go. Here we go. Come on. Where's all those ramblers? £20 for it. Come on. Go 15 then. Yeah, 59 bid. Thank you, sir. We're in the room at 15 pounds. At 15, are we sure? Yeah. 17. New bidder at 17. You want 20, sir? Yeah. 20 pounds. <laughs> two, sir? I'm going to buy things yeah. at five. All it's got to do is make 220 and I'm back in the game. No, 20 with you, sir. Are we all done? Fair warn then at 20 pounds. <laughs> there you go. I'm happy. That's a cracking profit. Five. <laughs> doesn't take much, does no. it? No. 80 no. with me. Next, Catherine's beloved penknife. This knife is going to slice through my profits. Oh, dear. I know. Where do you get these jokes from? I don't know. Some people wouldn't call them jokes. It's me on the book at 30. At 32, 35 with me. Yeah. 37, 40 with me. At 40 pounds. Bitter in the room at 45. Oh, no. Comes yeah. back to me. I've got to go when I've been left, which is 47. 47. 50, 50 on the net takes me out. Better than I thought. 50. At 50 pound, looking for five. 55 I've got. At 55, wow. the net is winning. At 55 pounds, any interest in the room? At 55 pound on the net. Are we all done then? At 55 pounds. Stabbed me in the heart, that one. Huh? <laughs> oh, Raj, that's so tragic. <laughs> no tragedy there for Catherine. That's a roaring success. Well done, Catherine. Well done indeed. Yeah. Will great things grow in Raj's stone trough? Surely 20 pounds for it. Yep. 20, come on. 20, I've got oh, yeah, easy. Yeah. On the internet at 20, is it two anyway? Yeah, come on. At 20 pounds on the net. 22 in the room now. Let's go. That was room first. Room at 20, 25 on the internet. You out? You sure? No, at 25 no. pounds. That's, that's okay. At 25, fair one at 25. Yeah, well, money. it didn't. It didn't make as much as we both thought. You still planted a profit, though. Ev everything, everything is making a profit. Okay. That's not a very good handshake, is it? No, I know. It's a bit feeble. Next, it's a biggie, and one Catherine had high hopes for. Fingers crossed. Give me thirty to start me down. Come on, surely, ladies and gentlemen. Thirty on bid, thank you. you that was go. room first. It's going to be on the internet. Is it? It's going to be on the internet. At, at thirty pound, thirty-two, thirty-five on the net. Now. At thirty-five, thirty-seven, sir. Thirty-seven in the room. Oh, this at is hugely disappointing. Room has it. At thirty-seven pound. Is Come it forty on. anywhere? At thirty-seven only, and I'm selling at thirty-seven. Good Lord. That is just unbelievable. That is 100, 100, 100 pounds. Yeah. I would have bought that. Such a shame. Such a lowly price for such a lovely thing. Someone's got a bargain. These things happen. They happen. you just got to shrug it off and move on. Good advice. Time for tea. Next, Raj's rather plain Clarice Cliff. Surely 50 pounds. Surely 50. Yeah. 50 on straight in, straight in, straight in a 50. We're way on the, at 50 band on the internet. 55 in the room now. 60 on the net. 
65 rue. There you and go. At last. currently winning at 65 baht. This is the last the set, Jimmy. <laughs> okay. okay. yeah. 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 The rumours got round. The rumours got round. Okay. Okay. Are we done then, ladies and gentlemen? It's 75 baht. 80 oh, 80. 80. Yes. 80. Do you want five, sir? 85 pound. Room at 85. This is all helping. Internet. This is all helping. And 85 in the room. Are we all done at 85 pounds going once, twice? Five at 85 pounds. Ching, ching. Yeah. Raj's cup runneth over. Well done, Raj. Smiley face, smiley face. <laughs> Last up for Catherine are her opera glasses. Can they hit the right note? Let's go 50 to start that one, eh, gentlemen? Oh. 50 I've got on the internet. We're away at 50. At 60 wow, pounds on the profit. net. At 60, we're at 60 pound on the net. Now, in interest in the room. Fantastic. At 60 pound, the net has it at 60. Are we all finishing at 60 pounds going I'll once? I'll take that and rub that everything. That is a great profit. Sold at 60 pounds. Yay! I'm happy with that. You should be as well. Don't look too pleased, Raj. It's it was purely the handle. Well, then, a Last, but by no means least, is Raj's Ammonite. 50 pounds. Looking for 50 pounds. Do I have any... I've got 50 Ooh, on the end. I need to have 50. Running at 50 pounds, zip five anywhere. 55 in the room now. 60 on the net. 65, 65 room. 70 net. 75 room. At 80 on the net. You can cut the atmosphere with 80 no. pounds, 85 in the room now. At 85 in the room. 90 on the net. 95 pounds. He's going to make 100 100, 100 pounds now. At 100, the internet, 120 we're at now. Oh, people, at people are thinking pounds. what I'm, yes. At, at 120 pound, ladies and gentlemen. I've got to be pleased with that. You've got to be pleased with that. At 120 pound, are we all done? And I'm going to sell it at 120 pounds. Oh, my heart was going in. Yours must have been racing. Turned out all right for the Ammonite. We could be even Stevens. Uh, I, I'm not and sure. I don't think I've caught up that I much. I really, really don't know. Should we go and do the maths? Definitely. Let's go. Get the calculator out. There are certainly ups and downs in Middle Littleton, but I've done the sums. Catherine started with three hundred and seventy-five pounds and eight pence. She made a profit of twenty-four pounds and fifty-eight p after auction costs, and she has three hundred and ninety-nine pounds and sixty-six pence to spend next time. Raj started this leg with three hundred and eleven pounds and eighty p and made after auction house fees a profit of eighty-three pounds and twenty pence. He finishes with three hundred and ninety-five pounds exactly. Despite winning today's auction, Raj still trails Catherine, but now by only four pounds. <laughs> well, Catherine, yes. I, I think I may have caught you up. I think you might have I done with your absolute rubbish that you bought. Excuse me? No, no, no. It was um, interesting. <laughs>